So I would like to present the uh, interdisciplinary research where I'm actually trying to combine different disciplines. I'm looking at an environmental perspective and also from a business perspective uh, onto a technical perspective. So it is clearly interdisciplinary. So I hope uh, that's not a problem. So I look on green business model cloud uh, and I had taken a new perspective with Internet of Things connected green business models empowered with artificial intelligence. Basically, I just need to take my hand. Basically, this uh, presentation uh, has been uh, getting the benefit of these uh, projects that's here, these scientific projects, which is a uh, Greenpeace project, is an EU project that's currently ongoing. Biogas uh, 2020 is also an EU project that uh, has been ended now. And then there's has some other projects. So a big thanks to EU and Interreg projects for helping this research. A little bit of uh, uh, facts in the beginning. Uh, actually, 24% of all the kilometers that's driving by trucks are actually empty trucks. So it's just, uh, you know, uh, getting to uh, an item that needs to be moved. But basically, the, the driving is not uh, having any value as such. And then uh, the beer and the rest, uh, there's actually only a, a capacity use of 57%. Um, and that's, uh, that's clearly uh, not a very uh, efficient way to do it. So to, to look a little bit how research today, what we're actually doing today to uh, make a better use of the capacity of uh, our vehicles that's driving around the road, road with uh, traffic, then we can look, um, some are actually trying here, I'll just uh, play a little bit of this. Some are actually trying to utilize the, the actual capacity of a truck a little bit better by making lifts so they can actually use uh, the truck within uh, much better. So they can uh, use the capacity of the actual truck and, and get more items shipped with one uh, shipment, you can say. So others uh, are trying to, to do other things by putting solar panels uh, on the roof of the truck, because uh, especially if we have uh, buses with uh, passengers and stuff like that, then uh, there's a high use of electricity and this can actually lower the consumption of, uh, of uh, the bus around uh, five to 7% of the gasoline are used on electricity power on a bus. So this is actually a way of lowering the consum consumption this way. If you look at the more, what kind of systems are actually being used to um, uh, utilize the trucks better to get more uh, use of the capacity, they are using telematics with this uh, IoT devices that's attached to uh, the networks and into the trucks. And, uh, and then they have a transport management system typically. Now, this is just an example uh, where they can have an overview around uh, where they are truck located around the world. And you can see, uh, you can they're usually able to see this on a map. They're usually able to go in and, and analyze uh, each truck and they can see uh, uh, different kind of parameters. It could be like uh, the speed uh, at a different location um, and time. It could be the, uh, you know, how high it is. It could be uh, the fuel level, uh, accelerization, uh, rounds per minute, uh, engine states. Uh, and then we have um, on larger trucks where we have more drivers, we have taco guards, which is a unit that can uh, record who's driving and um, how many hours he's been driving so we can uh, uh, you know, the, the law says you're only allowed to drive a certain amount of hours before you have to rest. So this is a way of uh, controlling that. Mm -hmm. And we can go even further and, and look at the green perspective. You can have, uh, you can analyze the driving behavior. You actually analyze the driving behavior by looking at the characteristic of the trucks. And then you can put in uh, how many rounds per minute uh, the truck has and how much you have put down the, the paddle, the, the, the speed paddle. And this way you can see if you're having a good driver behavior or bad driver behavior of the truck, and that actually can lower the consumption by around 10% if you have a good driver, according to one who's not driving um, the truck in an environmental way. So this is uh, the IoT devices that are able to give this feedback back to the company. Then we have uh, other situations where you have to plan uh, because you have some goods that needs to be moved around the world. And uh, typically we have uh, transport management systems that can plan uh, 
either the cheapest way, the fastest way, and where are your trucks you can see it so you can check the, the truck that's nearest by to, to pick up uh, this uh, item and, and move it. So this is uh, just the current state of how, how it looks today. So if you take that and you look at it from a more theoretical perspective and say, how does that actually fit into business modeling and digitalization? Well, if you look at it, you can see that we, the red uh, square I put on this is that we are actually looking about uh, the business model is actually looking at a human intermediary where we actually have the humans who's doing something. This could be a dispatcher that's uh, making sure that the, uh, you know, which driver and getting which uh, load. Uh, then we have the business reality, and then we have the machine intermediary, which is in this case uh, the IoT devices that are attached uh, to the trucks. But what we don't see actually is we don't see very much focused on the business model ecosystem, and then using the, you know deep learning and and path uh, you know this way, because um, we don't see that much optimization across the organizational boundary. And there's a very good reason for that. And that's because many of them are actually competitors. So you will actually see situations where you have trucks that's driving empty next to a truck that's actually uh, full. So in, in some sense, uh, there are not much optimization across the organizational boundaries of, uh, of the traffic today with the transportation. And if you look at it from that perspective, you can see that if you look at it here, you have uh, one company. Uh, now I have like several companies here, and each company has a, a different kind of demand from the customers. And what they're doing is they're doing optimization, but the optimization they are doing is local, uh, based within their own organizational boundary, and not going across uh, uh, to other organization boundaries. So if you could imagine to have a 6G uh, service where you have to registrate your empty capacity. When you're driving uh, around the roads, you should not registrate what you're driving around with, but you should registrate your empty capacity. And that empty uh, capacity has to uh, be offered to other uh, transportation companies so they can use that empty capacity. If you think about it this way, you can have a 6G green, uh, green service that can actually facilitate uh, optimization across uh, the boundaries of the organization. And this, of course, needs to be secure and also needs to be anonymized uh, and such. One of the things you could, you could say about that is that at least uh, if you look at the perspective of 6G in 2030, the, um, the regulation in EU, there's a lot of different regulation going on. First of all, we, we have the GDPR that was coming. Now, now we, you know, the persons own their own data. And uh, there's just been passed a new EU law that's come into effect that uh, all truck drivers that are driving around in Europe, they should pay uh, different uh, fees to the truck driver according to what country they are entering. And that means that uh, they actually, uh, EU is providing a service just like this, just a little bit different, not put into a, to a 6G or 5G, but providing a service that actually um, where all truck driver has to register before they enter, uh, enter the other country to be able to ensure that uh, the driver is getting the right uh, uh, salary according to which country he's driving in. So the salary of the truck driver is actually depending on which country he's driving in and not which country he's hired in. And this is uh, coming as, uh, as uh, in effect from, from EU is called the mobility package. And, and basically you could imagine uh, that some similar uh, thing could happen, that some, somehow regulation could be passed that says, uh, we actually need to take care of the resources we are using. So all uh, empty capacity driving should be registered uh, and this way offered to others. So we, not, we don't have uh, resource waste as we do today. But let's look at how big, uh, how big is the F, uh, effect of actually trying to do this? How, how, how big is this? Well. If you look at uh, how much CO2 emissions it is, then actually 24% of it comes from energy. And if you look on, on, the, on the roads, then it's uh, almost 30% uh, in total. And if you go say, okay, but what is the theoret theoretical uh, optimization potential then? Well, if we have 20% of the truck that's driving empty and the rest is uh, around uh, uh, 57 uh, uh, usage, then uh, it's more than 50% if, if you have like a 100% utilization, which is, uh, you know, uh, not achievable in any way. But if you say, if you can, uh, you know, achieve to optimize it by 50%, 
then you will have something that uh, equates to 20 times uh, the entire uh, CO2 uh, emission of Denmark, Denmark as a country. So, so definitely there's a, there's a huge potential of actually make it different also from an environmental perspective. So uh, uh, a service like that, uh, a 60 application, that should uh, be based on, uh, on uh, or, you know, a central database that somehow can look at these patterns and find out, uh, at least register it and offer them to, to others. And basically uh, this could be done by a graph database where we can uh, uh, store all these uh, data. And afterwards you can look at the architecture where you can say, all the different applications, this should be open API, open source, so everyone can uh, access it. Uh, and therefore, uh, it would be nice if it was a 60 service, so it was not a commercial one, but basically offered uh, by the 60 service as such. And then of course, it needs to be, um, it needs to be secure and it needs to be anonymized and it needs to, you need to have authentication, we need to have authorization. And of course, it all needs to be encrypted as, as such, so nobody is uh, afraid of uh, accessing the service in a secure way. So basically, the focus today uh, has seen to be within one business and then within the business reality, and we're using technology as an intermediary for, for getting data. And then we have the humans to put, who actually are involved in the decision process of which truck is getting what. And where I propose that we are going a little bit more to a business model ecosystem, and then you make use of more of uh, deep learning and uh, artificial intelligence to find patterns of good ways of uh, optimizing the, the traffic. So we're actually going from connected things uh, to connected intelligence. Yes, and that was my last slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>